Welcome to the second video in our series on post-resuscitation management in children. Now, move on to the child's neurological system and assess. Check and control the patient's temperature. Conduct a neurological assessment by checking pupil response, gag reflex, and corneal reflex. Check for cerebral herniation and identify seizures. Check normal and abnormal movements and neurological findings. Get lab tests to check glucose levels, serum electrolytes, and calcium concentration. Check for any overdosages or poisons and conduct cerebral spinal fluid studies. Get a CT scan and an EEG to monitor brain electrical activity if the child has convulsions or epileptic seizures. Support cardiac output and oxygen. Avoid hyperventilation in the child. Monitor blood glucose by treating hypoglycemia. Check glucose concentration and treat hyperglycemia. Control hypothermia or hyperthermia as necessary. If the child has increased intracranial pressure, keep their head in a midline position and ventilate them. Give them steroids for inflammation or a central nervous system tumor. Use mannitol or saline for herniation. If the child has seizures, treat them with benzodiazepine, phenytoin, or barbiturates. Correct the metabolic causes of the seizures, checking for toxins or other diseases. Next, evaluate the child's renal system. Check for decreased urine output, which is defined by less than one milliliter per kilogram per hour in infants and children. You should also check for increased urine output due to glycosuria or DI. Conduct a physical examination, checking the abdomen for distended bladder or a tight abdomen. Check for low blood plasma volume. Ensure correct urinary catheter placement. Get lab tests to check renal function by the ratio of blood urea nitrogen to creatinine and check serum electrolytes. Get a urinalysis and assess the child's metabolic state by ABG, glucose, and neon gap and lactate concentration. Restore intravascular volume and systemic perfusion with vasoactive drugs. Administer loop diuretics to children with volume overload and congestive heart failure. Put potassium chloride in IV fluids if renal function is poor or the child has no urine output. Fix lactate acidosis with vasoactive agents and fix non-anion gaps with sodium bicarbonate. Finally, after the return of spontaneous circulation in children, assess the respiratory system. Use pulse oximetry to monitor blood oxygen level and heart rate, and a colorimetric device to monitor exhaled carbon dioxide. Check intubation. Conduct a physical examination of the child, checking the rise of the chest and listening to abdomen and breath sounds with a stethoscope. Check for tachypnea, agitation, difficulty in breathing, cyanosis, and poor exchange of gases. Then get a lab test of the arterial blood gas and a chest x-ray to check for any pulmonary problems and confirm correct placement of the ET tube if present. Give the patient oxygen and check for a blood oxygen level of at least 90%. If their level is under 90%, give them additional ventilation support. If a child experiences respiratory failure, you need to perform an endotracheal intubation and insert a gastric tube to eliminate gastric contents. When intubating children, give them vecunarium or another neuromuscular blocking agent as this facilitates intubation. Control pain with fentanyl or morphine and sedate children with lorazepam or midazolam as necessary. This was a section on post-resuscitation management in children of our Pediatric Advanced Life Support course. Please proceed to the next section of this course and review the corresponding videos.